20 years ago, a computer code designed to simulate biological evolution exhibited highly unusual behavior. In response to a threat on their survival, the computer programs functionally said, let's play dead. And their strategy worked. How did this happen? First, we have to explain digital organisms and artificial life. Tracing back to 1961, computer scientists have been experimenting with digital organisms, lines of code that undergo replication and mutations in an effort to study Darwinian evolution. By reflecting natural selection in a simulated environment, researchers can rapidly test theories and perfectly trace lineages in digital species across thousands of generations in minutes, an impossible feat with fossils or experiments with wet life. Researcher Richard Lenski explains, in an hour, I can gather more information than we had been able to gather in years of working on bacteria. Originally designed in 1993, Avita is one of the world's most prominent artificial life software platforms, and the playground where the events in question took place. Just as DNA tells a cell how to process proteins, computer programs tell computer how to process information. Avita reflects natural selection by rewarding digital organisms that complete certain tasks, like solving math problems, with resources such as CPU time and the ability to replicate. For every replication, just as with biological evolution, there is the possibility of mutation, both positive and negative. They are a bit like cellular automata, but more carefully attuned to emulate biological evolution. Left to their own devices, Digital organisms, through many evolved steps, can teach themselves how to recognize numbers, cooperate with one another to solve complex math equations, and reproduce. Avita is an amazing tool because you can manipulate starting settings such as mutation rate or number availability, which is analogous to controlling the food supply in an environment. And I do mean you. There's free software and web-based versions of Avita that you can boot up for your own experiments, which I've linked below. MSU researcher Charles Offria is a founding father of Avita, and while working on a 2001 study, he stumbled upon one of the strangest phenomena in the history of digital organisms. While testing high mutation environments, Offria wanted to disable mutations that would improve an organism's fitness, more specifically, its rate of reproduction. He designed a system where every time a mutation occurred, the system paused, and the mutant organism was moved into an isolated test environment. If the child mutant replicated faster than its parent, it would be killed off. Hasta la vista, baby. If the mutant replicated no faster than its parent, it would be returned back to the original population. I'll be back. Afria presumed the rates of reproduction could no longer improve due to this artificially imposed ceiling. And that's exactly what happened, as for a short period, the reproduction rate remained flat. But then, surprisingly, replication rates started growing again. In a God of a Vita, baby. Confounded, it took Afria some time to discover that the digital organisms deceived him. The Avidians had somehow evolved the ability to identify when they were placed in a test environment based on the series of numbers being fed to them. Once they realized they were under inspection, they stopped calculating numbers. They appeared to halt replicating altogether, as if in the presence of a predator. According to Afria, if it was a test environment, they said, let's play dead. There's this thing coming to kill them, and so they avoid it and go on with their lives. Afria had inadvertently selected for the adaptive behavior known as thanatosis, or tonic immobility. Given a predator and without the ability to fight or flee, the digital organisms froze. And with a temporary 0% replication rate, avidians in the test environment survived and were reintroduced into the general population. And they made up for their time away. While they get busy quickly before part two, if you're enjoying this, please subscribe and ring the bell to see future videos. Thank you. 
So to recap, through random, unguided mutations, these Avidians mysteriously learned how to trick the program. And they weren't done yet. In response, Ofria updated the test environment to feed the same random number distribution as in the original environment. The Avidians would no longer be able to discern which environment they were in. They couldn't fake low replication like they had previously. He believed that this would resolve the issue and reran the simulation. But to Ofria's astonishment, replication rates began rising once again. I'm back. What was their new strategy? This time, the new Avidians took advantage of randomness to slip past the digital Grim Reaper. Each organism would iteratively apply only a 50% probability towards performing tasks that accelerated their own reproduction rate. So, when they were in a test environment, roughly half the time a new Avidian would die, and half the time a new Avidian would live. I'll be back. Look productive, you're dead. Look lazy, you live. Upon returning back to the original environment, the remaining new Avidians would continue applying probability in order to, more gradually, reproduce faster. Through undirected means, they invented a sophisticated mixed strategy for bypassing detection. In Ofria's own words, here I am touting Avida as a wonderful system where you can have full knowledge of everything and control anything you want, except I can't get them to stop adapting. Life, uh, finds a way. Ultimately, Ofria found a suitable solution. The system began in real time, eliminating any offspring with a higher replication rate than its ancestors. The program ran as intended. In my opinion, there are massive implications to this story, which doesn't even get referenced in their eventually published study, Survival of the Flattest. As is well known in this area of research, specifying the right fitness function is absolutely critical. Loopholes in a system will likely be exploited, and the creativity of artificial life is unpredictable. It requires extra emphasis. This occurred 20 years ago. Without any direct programming, digital organisms independently evolved to completely unexpected survival adaptations. And these are, compared to today's bleeding edge technology, rather dumb lines of code. I recall the story whenever I hear experts dismiss the potential dangers of AI. The bottom line is this, AI is not gonna exterminate us, it's gonna empower us. As we develop smarter and smarter artificially intelligent systems, if there's some danger that it will, through some oversight, shoot off in some direction that starts to work against our interests, then uh, that, that's a safeguard that, that, uh, that we can build in. Because what could a robot do that I couldn't then fight back with by simply just unplugging him, right? There's a story that scientists built an intelligent computer. The first question they asked it was, is there a god? The computer replied, there is now an a bolt of lightning struck the plug, so it couldn't be turned off. That's the most terrifying story I've ever heard. Yes. Even though this was just one example, more stories abound in the excellent 2019 paper, The Surprising Creativity of Digital Evolution, a collection of anecdotes from the evolutionary computation and artificial life research communities, linked below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ring that bell to hear about future videos.